Hello everybody, Big Chonis here. How's everybody doing on this hot July 30th, 2019? I wanted to check out some interesting Bitcoin chart. But before I do, remember to hit that thumbs up button. Remember to give me a follow on my YouTube channel. And of course, you can follow me on Twitter. I am at Big Chonis. I also have a little announcement I'm going to make in a couple days of a little project that I'm very excited about pursuing uh with you guys and uh but that will be in due time but not that much longer so let's get into it okay so i'm on the six hour chart here and what's very interesting is a couple things here um i want to start with this little area of price action that we had back on the first of july we had a good bounce there it's a really good bounce after our top here and we bounced from this area ninety six hundred dollars almost three thousand dollars almost 35 percent bounce from the ninety six hundred dollar area we then came back and we tested it here and we actually found another bounce when we tested it again that was a smaller one just a thousand dollar bounce no big whoop but then we broke it and we broke it in this candle and we actually found support still in the 9Ks, okay? But now we were under this area of support that we got a very nice 35% bounce off of the Bitcoin in the beginning of June, July, and that went all the way. It's like a 10-day like move there, so a week and a half. And we were able to bounce and get back above this major area of support, uh, even though we had broken it very quickly here. This was about like a day and a half. And we had a bounce once we got back over, let's call it that area, of another nice, you know, uh, $1,500 move. So for three times in a row, once we are able to touch the $9,700 zone um, or get back into it, we have had a $3,400 bounce, a $1,100 bounce, and a $1,400 bounce, all from touching the $9,600 zone. And now, where do we find ourselves? Well, we find ourselves, you know, on this crazy cluster back at 9,600 and kind of on the down end of that. And what I mean by that is we're arguably finding this major support as resistance. And this is critical now because this is the area where a couple times here we have had nice bounces. We have found the support and, you know, you keep testing a zone, 97, 91, 93, 91, enough. And at some point you're not testing it to see how strong it is. You're testing it to see why you can break it. And the more times we keep testing this $9,100 zone, the better chance it's going to break down. And Bitcoin's going to break down and retest really how strong a lot of this price action is. And it's very subjective to figure out where in this area you get the most stability. You know, you get the most uh, meaningful support. Where in this area, if we break through, is that next $9,600 zone that gave Bitcoin a, you know, almost a $4,000 move. You know, there's arguments that the $8,500 area would fill the CME gap. We also see this structure here of resistance. Let's make you a different color. Um, when we initially touched it, you know, 8,800 to 9,100, there was a big resistance there. We were here for a couple days. We got rejected, but we were able to hover just a little bit under it find our advance, bust through, and then create that area as support. So if we lose this area of support, there's actually, a, you know, a kind of a gap of nothing here, you know, to about $8,700. And then after there, we're just talking about horizontals now. We see our next zone of horizontal price history. Uh, you know, I'm not going to make you green. Let's make you light blue. Uh, where once again, there was a stop of resistance here, but it was also an accumulation area, okay? So a lot of Bitcoin, from a price action standpoint, was accumulated 
as this area, and especially down to around $7,400, was tested numerous times. So once again, we have a zone from, I'd say, the top 81, and I'd say the bottom is about $7,500. So there's our next zone. Actually, let's make this zone to zone. Okay, so we get two zones here. We get the next one that would basically get broken through. And I would still constitute anything down to around $8,800 as still holding this overall 9K area. Just because we just, there's, there's a lot of history in this couple hundred dollar zone. So I'm going to call it as a zone where we can still get down to $8,800. And I would still argue we're, we're holding the upper side of this resistance. But we break through 8700 and now we're talking about this next zone, which is in the mid 7Ks. And then after that, yada, yada, yada. But let's just keep it to, you know, at least no, no more than 2,000 below and then no more than 2,000 above if Bitcoin can break above here. So we have the history of finding support here. We're now testing it for a third time and we're trying to factor in major areas of support. Now, it's not just major areas of support from a Fibonacci standpoint, from our CME um, fill-in-the-gap standpoint, uh, but when we go into higher time frames, you can kind of see uh, from a candle formation uh, what's meaningful. I want to just touch base on the weekly really quick before I go to the monthly. The reason why I wanted the monthly is because it closes tomorrow, and that's going to be an important close here. Now, overall, you can kind of see how these two candles here, let's hide these for just a moment, the early June and the mid-June, these two candles, okay, they show us this reversion, this rejection at 87, test to 77, and then back above 87 the next week. So there's a big gap here where if we don't hold 88, 78 is very possible very quickly because we see how quickly Bitcoin moves between 76 and $8,600 here. Very fast price action. This price action has re-encompassed all of this bullish candle here. Okay, this was a mega bullish week of Bitcoin here, June 17th week of. We've given all that back, all that back. And because of that, the next Marabozu-ish looking candle on the weekly can definitely be targeted all the way down to the bottom of it, just as this one has been targeted on its bottom currently. Now, just a few days into the week, very tight doji here. Don't really want to speculate too much on the weekly, but I can... I can speculate on the monthly. And the monthly chart here shows us a very similar upper wick, upper wick, upper wick, upper wick rejection. This is our highest volume month. Okay. We have more volume this month on the Coinbase, which basically is your retail. Okay. Then we've had since February of 18, which was a very bullish month. It was a dump early in the month we were at 11 almost 12k went down to almost 6k and then back up to 10k that was minus uh you know uh 50 down and 40 percent up you know just a huge dump uh no it was 100 percent down and 40 percent up so been a while since we've had that kind of a volume profile and that's a bearish candle it's hard not to look at the candle itself and be very skeptical about the fact that we don't just have one, but we have 60 days where we tried to get above 13,000. We were able to at one point within the month, and then we got that rejection. And now, since we're kind of saying not only do we reject 13 and 12 and 11, but now we're rejecting 10,000 as an area of, of support. So we got one day left, like a day and a quarter, to finish out this month, make this candle look a little bit better. There is some positive though, and here's what I'm talking about. If we go back in the little history here, just use this one here. So you see what happened here. We broke, we got, we broke through, broke through, Wick held us, Wick broke us, but closed above, okay? And then 
we broke it, but we held the higher low. We came back to 97 here. This was April of 18. Next month, we got a little bit higher, $9,900, right? So that area, these two candles in the bear market, right? Uh, it, it marked the peak of this zone before we put in lower lows and then basically broke down bearish there. So this zone represented kind of this last area of support before the lower one was set in and the continuation of the bear market. Now, okay, for now we are basically, if we close, you know, around this area tomorrow or in this area, let's say over $9,300, okay, we're now finding on the monthly time frame an area that marked a continuation of our bear market could now be acting as support on the continuation of our bull market. And that once again shows how important holding above $9,300, $9,500 on the monthly, which we can see is such an important area to close out the month, which will give some uh, comfort that we're just consolidating and maybe Bitcoin isn't ready to break through 13K just yet, but it's also not ready to dump below, majorly below these areas. Now, in this zone here, I mean, look at this May. May was a tremendous month, 5,000 to 9,000, you know. We came back, we found support right at 7,500. So we can start to go backwards now and say, okay, 9,300, major support. But if it's broken, we have really this tight wick and this closing month happened the very same price action. And that is $8,500. And that does represent on a monthly time frame that next, not just the, I, I, I like the wick here, but I love the close of the, of the month and then the expansion after it of this month here. So this can be held as support, but because of this wick and then the follow-up whip of the past, of the month after, you know, that can be taken down to as low as 77, maybe $7,600 there. So that's our next zone of support on the monthly. Just as we saw in the lower time frame, we're confirming it on the higher time frame. If this area fails to hold support, if it holds and a Bitcoin can expand and this can turn into some sort of a pennant, you know, some sort of a, a bullish pennant like this of consolidation over the next several months, you know, that long, maybe like that, like that long there, right? Wouldn't that be great? Or maybe something like this, a, a bullish running pennant, you know, something like that, that'd be great. Instead of doing a repeat of what we had seen when we got the exact same upper wick candles, which was basically the follow-up month, which would be August, we had a big capitulation, price went down far lower, broke through this entire bullish candle we had here and was able to hold just a higher low above the bottom wick of that candle. Does that represent a similar dump to 7,500? You know, whoa, and then a very good slingshot back to test the 10K area again? You know, is that the better possibility? That's the setup we look at as we're about to close out this month and start a new month into August. A couple indicators to make note of. Chalk and money flow is terrible on the monthly. OBV, uh, notable pullback, obviously holding a higher low because of the monthly expansion of the candles. RSI still above 61. There's still momentum here. There's still... There's still strength here, and we got even running room, but um, clearly a rejection at that area there. Um, monthly stochastic, it's still not necessarily um, weakening, other than this little, little crook here, but until we get across, or at least this guy starts to kind of, or if this closes at a lower crook at the end of the month here, um, we could see that rejection similarly to what we had seen here. So higher time frame oscillators are still not that bad. This is our MACD on the monthly. We can still see we're still in the bullish cross, still putting in a bullish histogram, 
okay? So perspective is notable unless you bought, you know, way up here and you're trying to figure out uh, where you want a dollar cost or if you're waiting for that next move higher. But that's the thing. We have a big range here of where the price can go. Um, and on lower time frames, most of our price action is just chopping up uh, people who are not uh, properly executing their longs or short scalp positions. Um, this is preventing you from taking a higher leverage trade in one direction. This is what crypto is. This is how it works. And you have to uh, not fight these, but go with them and take advantage of these incredibly quick moves that seem to happen in minutes, up to five minutes, a lot of these wicks sometimes. So the market has a lot of indecision, but the fact that we are still finding resistance around the $95, $9,600 zone, I find notable, and that's important. I want to just look at a couple more indicators here before we close out the show. I'd like to keep this just under 20 minutes here. So the daily... Again, we're still below our EMAs. This was such a great uh, bearish indicator here when these crossed back 10 days ago. I talked about this a lot then. This was our bearish cross. We were flirting with such a while, and the expansion has been brutal. You know, four hour out uh, of 12 hour. This is a rough 12 hour candle here. We got three hours to make this guy look a little better here. Still finding that rejection. EMA 12. Uh, six hours, kind of my most important at this stage here. Uh, we've been in this bear cross continuing. This is a daisy chain, and I like to see our initial attempt and fail the first time where the candle gets above, but the oscillators don't. And I could see a second break above would be a bullish sign for me, actually, uh, on the six-hour time frame. But we keep getting that rejection here. So if we can close above finding the EMA 12 as support, I could definitely see the price action trying to retarget the 26. But again, these are getting very close now. So uh, still not seeing... Um, that push through other than the fact that we are holding support and the four hour looks exactly like the six hour. Um, but look at the higher time frame weekly, still holding above EMA 12, back to back test and hold. It's very important, okay? But if we touch this again, which is at 9,200, and I don't think we're gonna hold it again. I don't. And if we fail to hold above it, and especially close the week under it, then the EMA 26 comes into play on the weekly higher time frame, and that's down in the mid 800, mid 7, uh, 7 Ks there. So higher time frames still show how far that we can fall. Lower time frames are just trying to basically hold on to dear life here. Real quick here, um, you know, we're still in a bearish count on the weekly, but a bullish one on the monthly, and we'll be in for some time because we have so much running room here. So we can still go lower on the candles and still keep a green count on the TD. We are on a nine on the three day. This closes out in two days. So we still have two more days to be in this nine on the three day, but we are on a nine on the daily, which we'll see. We'll see what kind of thing will happen here. This is yet to show it as a reversal candle. And we do tend to do a little bleed out if we don't see that reversal candle in the shape of the candle. You know, uh, if this candle looks something like this, this three here, and really gorgeous hammer, I'd say, yeah, that would be an ideal nine to, to find a nine on, but not yet. So the daily is showing a little bit of seller exhaustion. The three day is showing the same thing, but could take a couple more days to play out. And with a, a kind of a break, a big break to an oversold bounce would be the most ideal for Bitcoin. If we can break and then bounce good with a V here, that would be the way to do it. But you can see we're getting very tight here in our angles, in our wedges of our price action. And listen, wedges, falling wedges, sure, they're bullish patterns here, okay? So it's still a good possibility that we can still break bullishly out of this. Uh, and we're getting pretty close to figuring out where that's going to happen. But on the three-day, you know, we could go uh, into the first week of August to get the confirmation of this breakout or breakdown. But this is a bullish pattern 
on higher time frames in an overall bearish environment. When we're in a month-long downtrend, that is a bearish environment. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, even though we are way above and have had a great year so far in Bitcoin's price action. Uh, we have had, you know, a very rough month from our topping end of June. And every uh, higher low has been sold off and a lower low uh, continues to get put in. But very tight here on our week, on our three-day, on our two-day, on our daily. So something's going to give at some point here where... Um, where we're going to see a little more extended volatility coming into the market. So with that, this is Big Chonus. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed my content. Got a big announcement in a couple days I'm excited for. Until then, talk to you soon. Stay cool out there. Peace.